<clears throat> Funny thing is that with all of the crap that happens in the world in terms of race and stuff like that, it can be really, really hard to stick with a video schedule because, you know, it's important to be timely with stuff. I actually just finished editing a video um, because initially I didn't quite know how to address all of my frustrations. It honestly just took, you know, seeing a few woke Asian people to really inspire me to say my piece as well and to not do it in a hateful manner. So I guess I would like to discuss how I find comfort in my identity when the world still doesn't understand my heritage and what I am. Definitely what I've done before I... Um, got hired at my current job. I would always watch a bunch of Asian YouTubers because just seeing Asian people thrive in what they do and, you know, in something that I have always wanted to do as well, it's very affirming, you know? Like, it makes you feel cool for being Asian because there are still not that many messages, I guess, telling people that Asians are cool. Apparently, it's not enough that Mindy Kaling, Aziz Ansari, and Margaret Cho, and, and Fresh Off the Boat... Apparently that's not enough for people to think that Asians are cool. And I also take so much pride in my heritage and who I am as well. I always remember, you know, going back to Taiwan with my family and thinking about all of the good times that I have with my extended family, how how strong they are for all of the shit that goes on in their lives, how strong my mom is for <laughs> putting up with all of my bullshit wanting to be an artist and you know with with my dad um being the only person that has a job right now um granted it's it's a really good job um but you know like you never know what's going to happen the next day i shouldn't be surprised but i guess it's still really really hard to find messages of positivity when it comes to seeing yourself represented media because like it's such an important thing that I really don't think a lot of people realize. Seeing yourself represented and not in a respectful way, it, it means so much to um, to kids that especially live in, in mostly white places like America or Australia. I know that I've said this a million times, but I grew up not seeing myself, and that sent a message to both me and my parents that I didn't belong in that space, that I would automatically fail in that space, and that nobody would understand me, and creates this message that you won't be successful unless you follow these certain paths that have been laid out for you. Like, it's honestly because I didn't see myself represented in media that probably my parents pushed me to do something traditional like coding, and that's probably why I picked my coding major in Berkeley. I believed that, that narrative that this was the only thing that I could do, and if this is the only thing that I could do to make a, a living for myself. It really took me a long time to not believe that, you know? And along the way, I've had so many doubts of whether or not I was even doing the right thing, if I was just being stupid. I was wondering if I was being all of the things that my mom didn't fight for. When, when you're an Asian American kid, you always run the risk of trampling over your parents' dreams about what you are going to be. And it really took me a long time to find ways of achieving that self-love to the point that I was willing to go against my parents' wishes, and it turned out really well. So I think that really means something. That idea of self-love can go a really long way. I, <laughs> As I was talking, I, like, I just realized, yeah, this is like the message for this video. Really, that kind of self-love, I think, can really go a long way. Like, being being an Asian American, it it constantly informs my work. Like, m all, most of the content that I make at work is about representation and about the subtle ways that structures like Hollywood keep people like me down. The concept of self-love, I think, is so important for people of color and for Asian people especially. No matter no matter who you are, I would definitely recommend taking the time to actively seek out things that will make you feel that self-love. For me, it's, it's watching talented Asian people like Natalie Tran and the Jubilee Project and Wang Fu and uh, Lily Singh. It's important to surround yourself with that message that makes you feel like you're something and that you're beautiful and that you are worth something. It's only when you have that audacity to be someone amazing that you can be. I, I think I'll end it there. <laughs> when I said that last line, I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. Um, I hope you take the effort of finding messages of self-love in a time where there's still a lot of public figures that think that I can be the butt of a joke. Specifically for Asian people that are watching me, I will leave links to all of the people that have inspired me 
throughout the years in the description below. And and also, I said this in the last video that is going to go up next week. Big thanks to Michael Chang for all of his amazing art. Uh, he gave me new banner art. He uh, gave me a new intro card and a new end card. And I love all of them because they're Steven Universe themed. And definitely check out all of his work and social media. From now on, he will be credited uh, every video description. So definitely check out his work because he's very talented and... He's actually a childhood friend. Um, I really enjoy talking about social justice and anime with him right now. So thank you so much for listening. I really, really appreciate you as always. Love yourself, and I will see you next week.